So obviously there have been a ton of advancements in AI video. Lately, we've very much been focused on image to video. But one aspect that we have not checked in on in a while is video to video. So today I've got what, what might be the most overpowered AI video workflow yet. In fact, let's take a look at a quick film noir short that I shot earlier today. She walked in the door on a Tuesday. I remember it was Tuesday because, well, nothing good ever happens on a Tuesday. Can I help you? Mr. Malloy, I hear you're a detective, and I am in need of one. Detective? No. Snoop? Maybe. You've got a pretty good nose, so what's the case? It's a murder, but the thing is, it hasn't happened yet. You don't say. Who's getting iced? Well, Mr. Malloy, you are. Well, that's certainly a way to get my attention. I didn't catch your name. Tuesday. Tuesday Sinclair. If I hadn't taken this case, maybe I would have lived to see Friday. So today we're gonna to tear into Tuesday for a full walkthrough, go over all the tools that were used and what I learned along the way. Okay, let's dive in. So off the top and as an FYI, I did partner with Domo for this video. So spoilers, Domo is one of the tools that we'll be discussing. That said, this is not a hard sell on Domo. In fact, if anything, the reason that I like working with Domo is that they're always just like, I do whatever you want. I, we're not gonna tell you what to say. So there's no sales copy or anything in here. If I say anything, it's because I actually genuinely like Domo. So that out of the way, let's move on to Tuesday, which I ironically shot on a Wednesday and I did it right over there. And that's not a detective's office over there. We'll talk about the set in just a minute. So first off, I did not use ChatGPT to write this script. Uh, it was actually written on the back of an envelope, which reminds me, I gotta, I gotta pay this bill. And about 45 seconds after I finished my envelope script, I, I grabbed my broken tripod and uh, physical production began. No set, no lights. Uh, I actually even used the front camera on my phone, which is the not good one. The reason I was able to get away with all of that is because I was using the Skyglass app, which is, it's kind of like a little miniature version of the volume, you know, Disney's virtual set tech technology, uh, except instead of, you know, being surrounded by high resolution screens, uh, you know, it's just all on your phone. So the way this works, and I know this is a little bit weird, but Skype glass basically, you know, removes your background and then replaces it with a environment created in Unreal Engine. And it's a full like 3D environment. So you can sort of look around. I mean, uh, granted, I'm keeping it very busy here because you know I've got a lot of stuff in my background right now. Uh, I think it fares a lot better if you're against a green screen. So as you can see, there are a number of other environments that you can choose from. Uh, additionally, you can actually create your own background environments as well if you know, you're know you good with Unreal. The one that I chose for this was obviously the detective's office. So you just hit that and within a few minutes, I'm now in Malloy's detective office. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool. So what we're looking at here is what's called live preview mode. So it does, yeah, you're gonna get a pretty good amount of clipping. Now you can, after you're done recording, export out a higher quality version of it. And you can actually even add in AI relighting, though that's still in beta. And it's been a little touchy for me. Uh, to be honest, I have just used the real-time preview mostly because I knew that we were taking it over to Domo for a stylization pass. For Tuesday Sinclair, I did not have to put on a wig and a dress, although I would have because I am a committed actor. Instead, Skyglass actually has a number of character templates uh, that you can replace yourself with. Um, I ended up using K-pop star. And yes, now I am Tuesday Sinclair. Uh, the one thing that I do notice in Skyglass is that you can't actually raise your arm. So if you look, she's not, she doesn't do anything there. Now, although you do get some like limited leg movement, so it does work for like walk cycles, not so much for kicks. So hopefully we'll get, you know, a better rigged character uh, in an update fairly soon. For the actual shoot, well, it was kind of a trip in all honesty, because, you know, I'm shooting by myself on this virtual set. And because it's just me, I have to kind of keep going back to the camera and checking to make sure A, I'm in frame and B, like I'm not clipping into a desk or something. But I did manage to hobble my way through it when I felt like I had the martini shot. Uh, you know, I basically walked five feet over here and the post-production process began. The first thing that I did was I just took all of my sky glass footage and uh, cut it together just to make sure that I had everything. As it turns out, I actually was missing a line, so I had to walk five feet over that way and do a reshoot. From there, 
there, I exported each clip and then it was off to Domo. Uh, now Domo has updated. They actually, the last time we looked at them, they were still on Discord. They actually have a fully fledged website working now. They do have a number of cool features. We will obviously be focusing on the video to video aspect, but you know, they do have image to video here and text to image, uh, as well as this move feature, which allows you to uh, take a still image and a motion video and you know take the motion from the video and apply it to the still image that said what we'll be focusing on here is again the video to video aspect of it uh so you know to get started here all you really have to do is drag in a video file so just for an example we're going to take this shot which actually was an outtake mr malloy i hear you're a detective and as it happens i'm in need of one I know, stellar acting on my part. Feel free to nominate me for a Razzie if you'd like. Uh, anyway, so taking that shot, just dragging it in, um, we can then move on to the stylization aspect of it. So the latest models are in the 3.0 tab. Um, this is where you'll find things like an anime sketch style, um, this kind of cartoon clay style. We'll take a look at that in a second because actually it is a favorite of mine. Uh, but I think the most impressive and interesting aspect is this fusion style v2 which allows you to upload a reference image and stylize your video to that image so what i ended up doing here was heading over to mid journey uh grabbing a screenshot from our sky glass output um, and then uh generating up a few images with a style reference to uh, i think we ended up with this one for tuesday and then repeating that same process with the screenshot of me for malloy uh and i guess that this is what majority thinks of me once you have those images you simply come over to the reference image tab here uh and then upload it and then you can generate at uh three to five to ten to twenty seconds now our clip is only four seconds long so obviously you know five seconds and then under advanced settings you do have some cool features like uh, uh, lip syncing, you can do screen keying, you can actually have the uh, style reference only be attached to your subject. Uh, the relax mode basically slows everything down. It does not burn as many credits and then obviously no watermark. I did forget to mention that utilizing Fusion Style V2, uh, you actually do have to write a prompt in. You can't just leave that blank. Uh, in this case, just to reiterate the style transfer in the reference image, I did actually prompt a beautiful woman with red hair. Mr. Malloy, I hear you're a detective. And as it happens, I'm in need of one. And after a few minutes, we do have our shot. Now, I do note that the reason that this was an outtake is that ultimately I didn't really like it because her hair just kind of, uh, you know, sort of moves as one giant sort of like plastic knot. Uh, that was actually a sky glass thing that was that was literally baked into the video. So once you actually do find something that you like, you can then upscale it by coming up to any one of these generations and then hitting the upscale button. And then you can take it up to either 1080p at 30 frames a second or 4K at 60 frames a second. I do have to say, well, we're just like scratching the surface in terms of what you can do with Domo's video to video. Uh, for example, taking this cling output that I generated a while back and bringing it into Domo with a style reference, uh, again, generated in mid journey that had sort of like this comic booky sort of style. We ended up with this, which looks pretty cool, like a completely different take on that same shot. Having some more fun in Skyglass, uh, I ended up generating up uh, the Black Knight on vacation. Well, hello. You, of course, know me as the Black Knight. Um, you know, yeah, just kind of chilling here on vacation. And then again, bringing the Black Knight over to Domo, uh, we ended up with this. Well, hello. You, of course, know me as the Black Knight. Um, you know, yeah, just kind of chilling here on vacation. Or you can do some even wilder stuff, like taking one of our Tuesday shots uh, and then turning her, you know, essentially almost photorealistic. Well, Mr. Malloy, you are. Some decoherence and morphing on that, but I mean, think about what just happened there. That literally began as footage of me, which was then changed into another character via a mobile app, which was then uploaded to Domo, changed into an animated character, and then changed into a photorealistic character. I mean, that's that's insane. Again, high recommend to try out Domo. There's just like a ton of stuff to explore aesthetically there.
Now, again, Domo does have that lip sync feature and it does work pretty well. Um, you know, of course, I was running into this issue because I was kit bashing from Skyglass that I needed an additional solution for a few of the shots. And that, of course, is where Live Portrait comes in. Now, I did an entire video on Live Portrait earlier this week. If you need to get caught up, that is linked down below. Now, initially, what I was doing was taking my Domo outputs and running that as my source video and then taking the raw Skyglass footage and using that as the driving video, but that didn't always work. So uh, a few times I did have to actually go back and essentially do my own version of ADR. No, Snoop, Snoop maybe. maybe, but I've got a pretty good nose. So what's the case? That is a lot harder to do than you think it is. Uh, but yeah, I definitely do think that Live Portrait tends to work a lot better when it, you're feeding it uh, driving footage of you looking directly at camera. Detective, no. Snoop, Snoop maybe. maybe. What I've generally found with live portrait and even acting within Skyglass is that with all of these things, you need to go kind of like really big in terms of your performances. Uh, it does not do subtle well. Rounding out, it was Eleven Labs speech to speech uh, for my ode to Rick Deckard, the you know most disinterested PI noir voiceover of all time. And Tuesday's voice, I think I just found on the community feed. Uh, again, both were speech to speech since you know I already recorded the speech. Closing the whole thing out with that nice kind of noiry soundtrack via Suno. So ultimately, does it all play? I mean, I think so. Stylized? Yes, definitely. Are there a couple of missed or awkward shots? For sure. But the thing is, like, take a shot like this, where, yes, it does lack a little bit in the aesthetics department, but I do love the expressiveness of it so much, and that's something that you really can't attain in image-to-video or text-to-video. And that's kind of why I love where this whole branch of AI video is going, because it really is turning into a fusion of performance, production, and technology. And while I'm sure there will still be naysayers, uh, the one thing they can't say is all you did was press a button. In terms of production costs, which is something that uh, you know I always like to cover when I'm doing these kinds of projects, uh, we have Skyglass, which costs $18 a month. Domo has a few different tiers. The lowest one is $7.99. Uh, you know, basically with that plan, you could accomplish everything that I did here. Midjourney has a $10 plan. I'm on the $30 plan. I'm just going to bookmark it here as the $30 plan because I use it all the time. Eleven Labs is $10. $10 and Suno, I, I just use the free version of Suno. So that brings us to a grand total of uh, $65.99. Again, as I talked about in my Dead Sea production breakdown, I am ignoring my own personal costs in putting this together. That said, even if I were to take, you know, my half day rate and like quadruple it, uh, when we compare this against a traditional pipeline, and again, these are just chat GPT estimates based off of the parameters that I gave it in being a 35 second animated film with you know two actors, one location and two exterior shots. Uh, basically chat GPT came back with, uh, if we were to do this at a top tier Hollywood level 3D animation, the budget would run somewhere in between 150,000 and $295,000 with a total production time of 13 to 19 weeks. I am actually gonna push back on that a little bit. I do think that a top tier Hollywood level 3D animation studio could pull, you know, 35 seconds off in far less time. At a smaller scale 3D animation studio level, ChatGPT came back with an estimate of $67,000 to $800,000. And $30,000. And it, again, if you think that sounds outrageous, uh, just think about a 35 to 37 second 3D animated commercial spot. Time estimate for the smaller studio was 10 to 14 weeks. Needless to say, I don't think that the little 35 second short that I put together in four to five hours, you know, matches the production quality of something that a major Hollywood studio would put together. But there is definitely something to be said about the fact that I did this in like four hours totally by myself. Rounding out, I really do just want to hit home that video to video is a ton of fun. It really gives you the chance to either start flexing or learning some camera skills. As you start really digging in and learning how shots are put together, well, that is only going to be extra helpful for you, you know, as you continue on creating your AI films. And on the plus side, you don't even need to go out and buy a wig anymore, unless you want to. I mean, your process is your process. Closing out, I thank Domo for sponsoring this video. If you haven't checked Domo out, definitely go give him a shot. I mean, it's just, it's crazy good. Uh, as always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.